seen some disturbing things. You know, I'll be driving down the intersect and pull up next to a semi-truck and look down and say, oh, he doesn't have any pants on. <laughs> so I'm actually looking down into semi-trucks from this vehicle. Hey guys, I got John here. John, who are you with? Well, John Marshall here out of Moab, Utah. I'm with Coyote Adventure. We're an off-road training program that's based out of Moab. And uh, today we're here at uh, Overland Expo. That's right. And this is your rig, right? This is. This is my 2005 Mercedes-Benz U500 Expedition Camper. This thing is a serious rig, and we're going to have a quick look at it. We're going to look at also what's in the back, because it's an awesome sleeper. So come on, let's have a look, guys. Sure. So what I've done here, I started off with this Mercedes-Benz U500. There's no other off-road vehicle that compares to these. And then I bought from Government Surplus, it's called a Gishner box. I bought that the uh, box from a military surplus site and then built it into my own Overland camper. Why? Because I'm a cheap bastard. <laughs> when I built the deck, it didn't start off this way. I was trying to figure out how I can get a ladder to pull out and come down that far. Or maybe I need a little landing and then a couple of beers later I came up with this idea. And all I need now is some fishing poles and a beach. But uh, it folds down, it's got um, linear actuators, you push a button, it'll fold up against the side, fold down, it takes about five minutes to set the whole thing up. To me, it just kind of came around in a, in a little epiphany and I thought, you know, if I'm gonna build a deck, why not go big so it's actually functional? And because it's not a huge camper, sometimes, you know, a little co close quarters in there, if I have my gal in there, she's making dinner, I need to get out of her way. And so I can come out, sit out here, and still be part of the big picture. It's kind of like a slide out you see on so many vehicles, but this is a little simpler. It is indeed, but it's really cool. All right, Andre. Yeah, let's let's look inside. All right, well, welcome inside. So what I've done, an elevated bed. I've got 84 gallons of fresh water under the bed. There's also a diesel-fired heater, as well as my three-way refrigerator. Also under there, my large inverter, 7,000 watt inverter. I've got an AGM battery bank inside. It's got plenty of uh, storage capacity. On the roof, I've got five uh, 500 watts of solar. So since I built this and, and plugged it into solar seven months now, it has not received a single electron from another source. Um, right here, I've got my, my sink and my stove and my dirty dishes from breakfast. Underneath that is the water heater. So I have uh, basically everything you need behind you there. Bathroom, hot shower, got the, uh, the commode in there, and my little sitting area. On top of the roof, I also have a, a nice Wii Boost cell phone booster so I can sit here, stay connected to the internet, and watch fantastic shows like yours. <laughs> Thanks. Off-road, these things are, are nimble like a cat really? and pretty comfortable. It is a big truck, but first and foremost, it's a Mercedes truck. So although it's big, it still rides like a Mercedes on road as well as off. So I can set cruise control 65 miles an hour going down the interstate. Off-road, it's got every you know amenity that you can throw into an off-road vehicle. It's got three locking differentials. It's got three ranges of the transfer case. Um, you know, first gear, four, low range, you're over 4,000 to one in first gear. Jeez. So it's just incredibly, incredibly capable vehicle. What is this way, this section here, when you brought it on and added all these goodies? The, the box itself, uh, um, the net weight on the box was 1,400 pounds. With everything I've thrown in here, probably the heaviest two things I have is the battery banks and the water. I'm probably still at about 2,000 pounds, maybe 2,100 pounds for the entire camper on top of this truck. It doesn't even know it's back there. Yeah, I was gonna say, it probably there's a quadruple of that in terms of what yeah. its maximum capacity is. Yeah, it's yeah. GVW on just the truck itself is 33,000 pounds. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm hauling a whomping uh, 2,000 with it. It doesn't, it doesn't give it a hiccup. Speaking of truck, can we look at the inside? Because I think that the interior is fascinating. Are you talking in the, in the, the, the cockpit? The, all right, sure. Let's take a look there. Far out. It's a bit of a climb, huh? Yeah, you kind of get a nosebleed when you come all the way up. <laughs> All right, well, fantastic. So welcome to the cabin portion of this. Um, there's some things that make this U500 unique. Uh, it's kind of a rarity. This has what is called a Vario drive. So if I were to push this button, I can pop this plastic panel off and I can slide the steering wheel and pedal assemble over to your side of the vehicle. 
So you can drive it from the right side or the left side. With the control buttons it has here, I pull this lever, You'll, there's a clutch pedal, and the clutch pedal will pop out or fold away. I can run it as an automatic transmission or a manual transmission. I can run it as automatic transmission with manual shift or a manual transmission with automatic shift. No way! And all of the variables therein. So, very, very universal. It also does come with eight hydraulic circuits, just in case I need to snow a throw, throw a snow plow on there. <laughs> it also has a PTO drive that's a direct off the motor drive. So, if you name it, this truck can do it. So it's kind of a diesel engine that doesn't like a lot of revs, but it doesn't need any revs. No, right? um, even going down the interstate, you're still well into that uh, you know 17, 1800 RPM mm -hmm. range. Um, off road, I can lug it down to you know even seven, eight hundred RPM, and it still pulls quite well. Do you know some of the power specs on those? Um, the, the basic power specs are uh, the engine itself about 280 horsepower, um, torque depending on some variables. You can get the torque on this up to about a thousand foot pounds cool. and so yeah and it's out of relatively a small footprinted motor and even with all this weight or the lack of weight I should say it's still rolling down the road about 10 miles per gallon well I see a power wagon down there but you're looking down on it I mean you're probably probably the highest thing out there I can tell you I've seen some disturbing things you know I'll be driving down the intersect and pull up next to a semi truck and look down and say, oh he doesn't have any pants on uh -huh. so I'm actually looking down into semi trucks from this vehicle which is well interesting and disturbing at the same time good and bad but yes. the visibility oh my gosh look at this there is so much windshield here and you can see right down on the ground so in an off-road environment you can really see the twists and the turns and the articulation that the ground is throwing at you there is no big hood in front of you and without that hood the vi the visibility for an off-road drive it's just second to none but you're kind of sitting on the steering axle aren't you um kind, yeah the, the wheels are pretty much right below us so it does have air ride seats so that's going to help take out some of the ugly out of the trail also it has central tire inflation so on the fly as i'm going down the interstate and i pull off onto the dirt road with the switch flip of a switch here i can go from you know my road pressure if anywhere between 60 PSI and 100 PSI and drop it down to 25, 30 that I'm gonna to choose to Is do off-road. They are right here, I can select front axle, rear axle, air up, air down, and this is a signal warning device. So I can air up both front and rear or air down both front and rear simultaneous or do one axle at a time if I want to finite adjust based on the weight that I'm carrying. And air up also. Air up, air right, down, right, yes. Right, right. So um, how did you get? Was it, was it difficult to actually purchase one? Uh, how does that work? Uh, there's a long, drawn out, and yet amazing story. Um, because I do have some other Unimogs that I use in my tour business, I had a call from a gentleman who said, "Hey, I heard you have some Unimogs. Would you be interested in buying another one?" So it actually came and found me. Um, they tossed me a price. I couldn't refuse. I bought it, and the rest was history. So. so like, but but like registration wise i mean you could is it pretty easy to like actually own one of these oh yeah this is a, a dot approved vehicle that was actually sold in this country but when they changed the um the epa regulations back in 2007 the model as it currently was would not pass the new spec so they they discontinued distribution although it is a legal vehicle here but before that you could have it yes know, before that ones. so they well there was five years that they imported this this is a 2005 they stopped importing them in 2006 so there was a very short window of time where these actually came into north america but it is a dot approved vehicle so there's no issues whatsoever um because of the uh, the GVW, in a private setting, you do not need a special license if you're using it commercially at all. Then, of course, you do need one because it is. Yeah, the GVW is rated at thirty-three thousand pounds. That's over the twenty-six thousand maximum. But it's an RV. Basically. It is an RV. Yes. Is it, it registered as one, or is it kind I of have like a truck? It, I have it registered as an RV now. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, perfect. It, you yeah. live for out of it. Well, I certainly do. <laughs> Most of the U500s that came into this country were eventually turned into snow blowers or snow plows, also used by utility companies to service power lines going through the middle of nowhere. So they came standard with eight complete hydraulic circuits and a direct drive PTO, so it could be used for a wide variety of different applications. But snow blowers and snow plows is where they really shined. Guys, 
<laughs> I want a Unimug so bad. We've had a chance to work with John before. Roman and I actually had a chance to go off-roading with him and Nina Barlow in Moab recently. Now, if you want to learn more about his organization, where do they go? Well, CoyoteLandTours.com, CoyoteAdventure.com. Um, that's, that's where you find us. If it's off-road training you're looking for, we can specialize it to any any avenue you're looking to do. Everything from corporate to military, private John Q. Publics, across the board. That's what we do. And hopefully we'll be able to get our hands on one of these in the near future. For the Fastlane Truck and for TFL Off-Road, this is Nathan and John Marshall saying goodbye. See you guys.